to my side and I saw this baby and the first thing that occurred to me is that this baby's legs look weird Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. If you're new to this channel and if you're seeing my face for the first time, you're highly welcome. Thank you for clicking on this video. And if you are a returning subscriber, subscriber. <laughs> if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back to my videos. I appreciate every one of you. So, you guys, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you the birth story of my first daughter okay my two children had very interesting birth stories okay but for this video i'm going to be telling you the one about cora cora is my first child uh many people asked me what cora means cora's name is the full name is cora fuma chuku okay it's not english it's actually cora fuma chuku that name is very long and it means let the world see the beauty of god okay her middle name is alicia alicia with s h a which is like the female version of Elisha. So it's not Alicia Keys kind of Alicia, it's Alicia. <laughs> yeah, so that girl is a special child. You guys know she's my rainbow baby. Um, after four years of infertility, I had a miscarriage. When I got pregnant, I had a miscarriage and then the next pregnancy was with Cora, okay? This story is very juicy, it's very, very interesting. <laughs> hey, 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 I even remember some things said that I was just like, eh? Like the devil really tried it. Like the devil, he really, he really, no, 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 the devil really tried it, okay? But as usual, as the failure and the, you know, loser that he is, he's always going to keep losing and failing in my life and the life of my family, okay? Yeah, so if you guys would like to know this interesting story, then just keep on watching. Remember to bring your snacks too, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Um, when I got pregnant with Cora, I was excited as always. I didn't really have any complications in the pregnancy. The only thing is that I had to take progesterone in my first few months. I think the first 12 weeks, I had to take progesterone because I had had a miscarriage before, okay? But aside that normal pregnancy symptoms, vomiting, I didn't really vomit with Cora. I didn't vomit, but I had this constant disgusting taste in my throat. Like I always felt like I was about, you know the... You know the the final steps before you finally vomit i always i was always stuck at that stage that final it was really disgusting anyway so um but aside that i was energetic throughout my pregnancy i didn't have issues i was doing everything myself um my mom was not really around most of the time so i was just i was on my own i was thriving i was happy i was doing well now the first issue not issue but the first thing that really stands out to me is that when I went for Cora's 20 week scan, I wasn't able to do that 20 week scan. Like, I wasn't able to do it to be honest. Like, in my hospital, I think the first time I went, they said um, that I couldn't do it. It was already too late. There were so many people waiting um, that they were only going to do just regular um, antenatal for most women because too many, women, too many women were on the queue. But if I wanted to do the. the um, 20 week scan, I had to come back on a different day. On a different day, when I came back, my doctor was not around. I now met, you guys remember the doctor, if you guys are familiar with my infertility story, I told my story here on YouTube how I battled infertility for four years, okay? So if you guys have watched that video, you remember that there was a doctor I told you guys, told me that I could not conceive except through IVF, okay? That guy was just the devil himself. Like the devil brought the guy to my life. But you know, <laughs> me, in my usual fashion, when I met this guy at my 20 week scan, I did not confront him. I didn't even ask him, oh, do you remember me? You guys, I've told you guys that I am not a confrontational person in the first place, okay? So, I was tempted, you know, I was tempted to just ask him, guy, can you remember me? I thought he said I could not consider through IVF. Oh, yeah, what's happening here now? <laughs> okay, I was tempted, but I'm not a confrontational person. Like I said, this of me to confront you, I will, I will forgive you. Like, <laughs> if I have to confront you about something, I'd rather forgive you. Like, let's just move on. Let's just move on, okay? So, when I met this guy, I was just like, hmm, this guy again. Anyway, I went to the guy, okay, what are you here for? I told him that I'm here for my 20 weeks anatomy scan. That's what I told the guy. I'm here for my 20 weeks anatomy scan. So, this guy told me, he said, eh, it's not called anatomy scan. It's called anomaly scan, okay? It is for us to check 
if your baby has any anomaly okay if your child is deformed or has any anomaly so if your child has anything like that they will now recommend you to the best hospitals in the world where you go so that your child can get you know help that's what this guy told me i don't know if the guy just has dry humor or if he's if he's just trying to be sarcastic or whatever but that man needs help like he needs help okay in fact I'm saying I'm not confrontational, but I'm going to pray to God that whenever I see that guy, whenever, wherever, God should give me the ability to be confrontational. Let me, let me, let me give it, really, let me really give the guy his story, okay? <laughs> so this guy now said, and I said, oh, okay, that me, I actually thought I've had anomaly scan, but to me, I've also seen anatomy scan, so it wasn't like he was wrong, okay? I don't know why he felt the need to correct me. And it's not like the guy did the scan for me. After he finished telling me this trash, he not told me that, well, I can't do the scan that day because one thing, one thing, one thing. And this was now about 24 weeks or so. I've already passed 20 weeks, okay? This was about 24 weeks. So, after that, I said, okay, you know what? There's no point in me coming back to my hospital to do this scan. Let me just go to the normal diagnostic center that I usually go to for scan. So, I went there. I did the scan. The guy told me everything is fine, you know. Um, I asked him about the gender of the baby. He told me everything. He just checked everything for me and I was happy okay, I was having a daughter, you know, I was just really happy. So after that to the end of my pregnancy I didn't really have anything significant happen. I was normal. I was fine. I was jumping up and down In fact the day before I entered labor, I actually tried to induce labor myself um, I couldn't uh, near my house. I couldn't just come out and start walking around. So I drove all the way. In fact, I made my husband drive me all the way to Spa. Spa is, is a mall in uh, Portacourt. He drove me all the way to Spa Mall. I walked from shop to shop. I walked from shop to shop, um, window shopping just so that I can, you know, get my body going. Okay. So after that, I came back home. I made one. Um, I cooked stew. You know, did everything I had to do. Then that night. Around 2 a.m. I woke up and I saw that my water had leaked. Okay, so I was like <laughs> Finally, this child is coming. Okay, so after the water I water started leaking because actually I laid down stood up I felt what had dropped down my legs. I was like, okay, is this pee? But me, I don't know I've heard women say that when they pee they don't know and um, like when they're pregnant But me, I know when I pee, okay I might not be able to hold it as much as, as in when I'm pregnant, as well as when I'm not pregnant, okay? But I always know that this one is pee, this one is not pee, okay? So this one, I knew for sure that this was not pee. So it happened several times. I was even like, ah, tell my mother, let's start going to the hospital, low, you know? But we were like, let's just wait a bit since I, have, I was not really, I was feeling contractions, but it wasn't that serious and wasn't, you know, timeable, okay? So around past six, we now decided to go to the hospital. Guess who was on duty when I got to the hospital? <laughs> yes, you guessed right. The same man. That man. That man. <laughs> that same man was present on duty. Okay? Now, because, you know, when you come early into the hospital, is you go straight to the emergency ward. You don't go and register straight. You go to the emergency ward, especially as a pregnant woman. So, I went to the emergency ward. He was the doctor. You know, this was happening on a Sunday. Was it a Monday? No, it happened on a Monday. So, I think he was on, on duty then. So, when we got there, you know, they checked my BP, checked everything about me. You know what the other things they do, check a baby's um, heartbeat and all that, and all that. They checked and they told me that the doctor on duty would, you know, see me shortly, but they will have to admit me. No, before then, I was still at the A and E, that is the accident, accident and emergency unit. I was still there. This doctor now came to meet me. So when he came, they briefed me everything about my case. Then the guy came to me and asked me, uh, what's going on? What happened? I told him what happened that. Um, several times I woke up in the night and instead of my stand up, I feel water drop down my legs. I, even right now, I was wearing a pad because each time, I, like when I'm sitting online, I don't feel anything. But the moment I stand up, I just feel the water drop down my legs. The guy now said, "How do you know it's your water? Do you know what? Do you know what your water is? How do you know it's your water?" But anyway, since you want to come and, and stay, we will accommodate you. We will give you bed and we'll just be feeding you until the time comes. That's what this man told me. Until the man time comes, but as far as I'm concerned, you don't know what your water is. That would have been the best time for me to just lose it on this guy. But in my, in my <laughs> normal me, still kept quiet. I was even smiling with him as he was talking the rubbish. You know, I just kept quiet. So after this whole thing, anyway, I stayed there on Monday. Luckily for me, Monday he was off duty. As in, after that, after I think he was 
the doctor on duty on Monday then he left he wasn't on duty again on that Monday so on Monday things did not really progress I was there in the hospital you know things I was feeling more contractions but it wasn't that bad okay my mom was already like eh where water is leaking why is where is the baby now in <laughs> my, mom, my mom was in the village then because she was planning to come to Port Harcourt but she went to the village for something so she was like she'll come to Port Harcourt from the village so when she heard that I hadn't given birth and my water was leaking, she said, so where is the baby now stay? That no, 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 no. That in fact, they should carry me and go and do CS for me immediately, you know. But I talked with my doctor and she told me that I don't need to do CS, that they'll just keep checking me, that don't worry, things will progress, you know, quickly. So the next day, that was a Tuesday, um, she tested me again. She now did a um, membrane sweep for me. Membrane sweep is when they put your hand in there and they they like shake things up and just you know open things up a bit just so that you know the, the labor can progress faster so she did membrane sweep for me so i waited on tuesday as well they now told me that i cannot be walking up and down now because my water is leaking so to be honest that thing was really frustrating because when i started feeling the pains i couldn't walk up and down to you know ease the pains i couldn't change position i just had to sit down or lie down or you know just sit down like I, I couldn't really do much so the pain was really intense okay but yeah that night um by um like maybe around 9 or 10 p.m things started progressing really really fast i was in pain i was shouting initially when i went to meet the nurses <laughs> on tuesday morning when i went to meet the nurses and i told them that i'm feeling pain oh that mean i think that this is the real deal oh then i told me don't worry when it starts we will know i was like what do people what do they think who do they think they are i don't know that some people have supernatural childbirth and that's because I, I had read supernatural childbirth the book before then so i always kind of thought that you know my case would be that kind of case where i'll just go to the hospital strolling and go and give birth no pain nothing that's it. so they told me that don't worry when the thing starts we will know my mother was like this is me this nurses will be here we born on this bed okay <laughs> waiting waiting but you guys like like the nurses they like they said when the thing started nobody told me or them that the thing had started because <laughs> the drama that that followed like so you can't even control yourself it's not like i don't know some people can control themselves but this one is not a case of uh, uh, it was no it was like yeah 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 oh <laughs> i made all kinds of animal noises that period like like when i think back now i'm just like Labor can make you turn to an animal, like you'll be making sounds that you never knew you could make, right? So one of them will be like, <sighs> So I'll be like, oh my god. I think I want to know about labor is that when you're in labor, you feel like the pain is unbearable, okay? That's when you're having contractions, I mean, but when the contraction stops. It's like nothing happened it's just like <laughs> it's like nothing happened like it is so amazing the pain of contraction you'll be shouting screaming holding on to things you know really although me i wasn't really a screaming kind of person i was just making sounds okay i was making sounds i was groaning <laughs> you know so you'll be making such sounds that you feel like your tummy is just like out of your body like somebody has carried knife and took your tummy that's how it will feel when you're having the contractions but when the contractions stop i'm not talking about when you're giving birth i mean in between contractions when there's there's, a, there's usually a break for some people for most people before the break the break becomes shorter as time goes on okay so when you're having that break you can actually be just laughing with people you know eating feeling cool with yourself when the contractions now start again it's almost like I remember there when the conductor started, I'd not be like, oh my god, what is all this? <laughs> what is all this? You know, that's what I kept doing. So they now took me to the labor room, you know, prepared me, put that thing that they will strap on your tummy so they can be here your baby's heart beats, you know, while they are in labor. So my then they were not trying to wait for things to progress. Um, yeah. So when was that time for me to push? You guys, I didn't push one. I pushed only twice. And let me tell you why I even pushed twice. The first one, when they told me, okay, it's time for you to push, push. Okay, no, the first one, I told the lady that, I told the doctor that, the midwife, because it was actually midwives attended to me, finally. There was no doctor there during my delivery, just the midwives, okay? My two deliveries, actually, I didn't have any doctor present to deliver the baby. So, when they first told me, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? I told them, see, I want to pull. They said, no, that <laughs> is not pull. That is because it's the same organ, no, the same nerves or something that are involved in pulling, that are involved in childbirth. I don't know how they explained it that no, it's not pull. That's actually 
the baby that is causing that discomfort so i should just stay on the bed that i cannot go and pull i said me i know my body i want to pull they said no it's not pull don't worry mother just relax i said okay when i told them he's coming i'm pulling no they said it's not pull oh we're not positioned for baby <laughs> they are positioning for baby well they got their baby <laughs> Oh my god, I feel so sorry for them, but they got their baby. You know, when I tell people that this is not baby, people say it's baby. Oh yeah, take your baby there. So after that one, they cleaned me up and everything, then now we waited for the real baby. Mm -hmm. So while we're now waiting, I told them that okay, that I can feel that this baby is coming up because I could now feel that the baby was almost there, like I could feel it. And I said, okay, that I should push. Guess what the girl was doing? You know how push? I don't know. I just felt like push is just push. And I did ah. They say, Madam, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. They said, No, wait, wait, this is not pushing. Let me tell you how to push. One, one nurse now explained to me how to push. I should hold my legs up. You know, I have to hold my two, two um, legs with my hands and I should push with as if I want to have the biggest paw of my life. That's what she told me. So I'm not like, Okay, okay, okay. So I now did that. That was how the baby now. Came out, Corona came out, okay. You know how mother say when your child comes out, you are so overjoyed. To be honest, when when she came out, I had mixed. I was everybody was happy in the labor room, so me too, I was just like smiling. But to be honest, I don't know what I was having this out of body experience. Like I was watching a woman give birth. It wasn't like it was me that was really involved in that birth, okay. So just like. They were like, oh, see your baby. I I could see that she was obviously blue, not blue, not. I mean, like she looked like someone that. It looks, it looks like a baby that you know was deprived of some oxygen or was about to be i don't know but she didn't look pink like normal baby she was just pale and had a lot of white stuff on her body so they just brought her out took her to the side to warm her up and then to you know make her cry clean her and everything so while i was lying down there i turned to my side and i saw this baby and the first thing that occurred to me is that this baby's legs look weird there's something weird about this baby's legs, but everybody was acting normal in the in the labor room. So I just felt okay. Maybe it's not weird. Maybe that's how newborn babies are. Maybe I don't really know how newborn babies are because to be honest, I've not really seen a woman give birth immediately. I've seen in movies, but we all know that movies sometimes they carry one month old baby to come be acting newborn. Okay. So when I said maybe that's how baby's legs are, but I just something in my spirit just now. This is not normal because her legs. Okay, let me explain how her legs were. Okay. I'm going to, if I see a picture, I'm going to insert it, but I don't know if it's going to make them demonetize this video. Anyway, this is how normal normal feet are, okay? This is like, this is your leg. Okay, let me put it like this. This is your leg and this is your feet, okay? So if you're, if you're lying down, this is your leg, this is your feet. My baby's feet, we are, this part of her feet was touching this part of her leg. Like her leg here was bent like this. That was how her legs were bent. The two of them. So I said... What am I saying? What's going on? <laughs> but you know, that's not what I was concentrating on because my placenta did not my placenta did not come out immediately. So they had to give me um I think oxytocin shot or something. I don't know. They gave me one injection. You know, they even had to bring her to me that I should try and breastfeed her so that my placenta will come out on its own, you know. So they brought her to me. I didn't know where to start from. She was even sleeping me. I was tired. I was like, what's good? I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing then. I don't know where you go, I try and breastfeed her. So I put her on my chest. I was trying to breastfeed her. She, she wasn't even really interested in breastfeeding. She was just looking. I remember her look very well. She was just looking. She wasn't even crying. She was a very... I thought that initial cry that she cried when they took her. In fact, when she was born, she didn't cry. When they took her to warm her up, she cried a bit. Then that was it. She stopped crying. So they brought her to me. She was just looking, looking like what's going on here. Me, so I was like, <laughs> picking. <laughs> me and you, we are, we are wondering the same thing. <laughs> you know, so after a while, they took her away from me. And then the placenta now came out. It, it, didn't, it didn't come out immediately. But yeah, I noticed that they were a little bit panicking. But one of the midwives, one told you that midwife, don't worry, to come and that they should just, um, whether they should give me another shot. I can't remember what happened, but I knew that eventually the thing came out so they cleaned me up got me ready took me back to my room they wheeled me back to my room i stayed in the general ward so i remember when they were wheeling me back to my bed everybody in my everybody in my room was, was clapping okay everybody in that you know how wards are now it's like a big hall with room with beds but you can 
you can you know close off your own side of the bed with curtains that was how my the world was so well, i think i came in around 4 a.m and in my hospital by 4 a.m everybody has to wake up and go and have their bath it doesn't matter whether you did cs so what you must stand up and go and have your bath except you just had the cs so while they were wheeling me in everybody was getting ready to go and have their bath and all the women there we were like seven women we were only two that gave birth um, vaginally, the rest were CS. So, oh, there's one that's up on their bed. I could see some women, you know, really suffering, but they were still clapping for me with the pain in their tummy. I felt really bad for them, sure. So, everybody was just clapping for me as they brought me in. Congrats, congrats, congrats. I said, thank you, thank you. They now took me to my bed. Uh, shortly after I rested, they told me I had to have my bath. We know their policy, everybody has to have their bath. I said, no, Wahala. So, I stood up, went and had my bath. I was normal. I had my bath, came back, started calling people, talking, you know. Um, after a while, they now brought the baby for me. Now also brought tea for me. Okay, so I drank tea. Baby was sleeping. Blah 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 blah. Next thing, I now said, let me change my baby because it told us that we have to be, keep changing the babies um, to be sure that they're, that they're not uncomfortable. Then we also have to start trying to breastfeed our baby. So ah, that my hospital there, they will say, wake up or sit down and breastfeed. That's how they'll be clapping. Sit down, sit down, and breastfeed. So. We don't get to change her now. I now saw her feet again. I said, this is not normal. I looked at other babies in the world. Other babies' feet look normal to me. I said, hmm. <laughs> if I was so bad that the onesie that I wore for her, you know these onesies that overalls the hair, the socks part, her leg did not enter properly. I had to try and open her leg. As in, you know, her leg was bent this way. So I tried to open her leg so I can enter the socks part. But it was just, it was just not staying in the socks part. I said, hmm. And I told my husband that see you, this child, I didn't know what to call it, so I thought it was clubbed foods, okay? So I told him that see you, I think this child has clubbed foods. My husband said, okay, no, I like my other campus does not really react much. Like his own reaction is, I'm happy, I'm sad, finish. Like there's no, you won't hear any extreme, you know, reaction from my husband. So when I told him, he was just like, okay, um, that he will see it when he comes, because he wasn't with, with me in the hospital then. That he will see it when he comes to visit me. So when he now came, you know, he saw it. He was just like, hmm, what did the doctors say? I told him oh, that nobody has said anything, not even the midwives, okay? That, um, okay, no, I now, I think one midwife that passed, I now called her and asked her that, that my baby's feet okay. She now said, oh, no, 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 that is fine. Don't worry that if, um, that they've already contacted a pediatrician that will come and see us and see the baby. So when the pediatrician comes, I should just tell them my complaint. But she tried to act like, she tried to act like it was nothing, but me, I could see that it was something, you know. So when Patricia now came, I told Patricia and everything. She said, oh, don't worry, that she has seen it, that, yeah, that they're going to call a surgeon, a specialist to come, that I should not worry about it. I said, okay, I shouldn't worry about it, but you're calling a surgeon, okay? So that afternoon, the surgeon came, you know, looked at her, told me to remove her diaper, I moved her diaper. He turned her to the back, looked at her spine, you know, looked at the feet very well, tried to bend the feet, looked at her spine. Now said that she has one thing. Uh, and that thing there, there was a time in my life where I was diagnosed with something. It's called, I don't know what it's called, but they said I had extra flexible joints. Okay, like my joints were extra flexible. You guys, I've had, I, I'll, that's the story for another day, okay? I'll tell you guys the story of how... I went to I went to Igobi, you know Igobi. I went to Igobi because at some point my 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 joints were just doing things on their own. They were they were working on their own without being controlled. Like I wake up some morning and this this uh, shoulder bone is up here. My hand is you know yeah. Anyway, that's it for another day. So when the guy said that thing, and I said okay, that I was actually diagnosed with something like that when I was younger, that maybe that's it. When I said, okay, that, but yeah, they will have to do x-ray on her and other tests to be sure that it is, you know, to be sure of what it is. But basically that I should not worry. They're going to look into it, okay? I said, okay, when my mom came and I told her, my mom, hey, hey, that one cannot hide her emotions. So my mom said, no, the devil is a liar. The devil, <laughs> the devil can never succeed. I should not worry, you know, so then, when we were going, when we when we went home, when I went home from the hospital, you guys, this story is actually very long, but I'm trying to just cut it short so this video will not be too long, okay? So when we got home, my mom took tissue and used it to where the feet bent. She used tissue to push the feet straight, like instead of you know instead of the feet to be like this, the feet was bent like this. So she would put tissue here to 
put this feet straight so that she can wear a onesie okay so she was wearing socks almost throughout like any boy that comes out to the house i didn't want anybody to start asking me what happened to your child what did not happen to your child so we always put that socks there for her and her feet okay so yeah that was it though that was how after some weeks we had to go back to the hospital we went to see the surgeon but the first surgeon we saw that's outside aside the one that came to see us at the you know in the ward the first surgeon we saw said that he had looked at this feet that there's nothing wrong with this child's feet that maybe it's the way she was staying in the womb that there's nothing wrong with her feet that some babies are like that that with time it will straighten we said okay but so as i was saying the okay my man i said eh how, so when you stayed in the womb, your leg was bent like this. As soon as you came out, why didn't you bend your leg back? After all, when you were in the womb, you were actually curved. But when you came out, you straightened your body. So why was your leg straight? <laughs> so I, I was satisfied with that one. Though. We now went to see another surgeon. The same hospital, but you know they have different surgeons for different days. We went to see another surgeon. This one was someone that came from Lagos. He was a consulting surgeon or something like that, a consultant. So when the guy came from Lagos, they booked us for an appointment. We went to see him. So he said, okay, he scheduled us for a... This was, she was around three months at this point, so he scheduled us for a, a what do they call it, a, a, an x-ray. So we took her for the x-ray. At that point, her feet was already straightening, but it was still bent, okay? So he took her for the x-ray, he checked her, he said he has gone through her x-ray, that this child is fine, nothing is wrong with her feet. But Cora at that point was walking like a penguin, like her feet were, I don't know how to describe it, like... When she stands, you know how you stand straight and your feet are facing like this? When Cora stands, her feet were both facing the side, like proper to the side. It wasn't like facing slight, uh, slightly to the side like some people. Some people, even as adults, some people walk like this. Her own was facing properly to the side. Like she will walk like a penguin. I say, hey, Chukwona, what is all this? You know but it gave me peace when the doctors kept saying that there is nothing wrong with her from even her scan her scan looks fine he said if you are still worried come back in three months time and we'll check her again but your daughter's legs your daughter's feet are fine so after a while you know this is something i've already prayed about we've already settled it with god that nothing will be wrong with her she's not going to need any aid walking after when i asked myself that if i've really prayed about this thing and i believe in my prayer why am i still going back to the hospital do i want them to not see something like they didn't see before so they should come and see now be you know so that was how we just let's go and we stopped going to the hospital and guess what guys her feet are perfectly normal now okay somebody told me ah you should have massaged her leg you should have pressed it with hot water while you were beating her you should have been pressing the leg with hot water <laughs> i didn't press ish okay <laughs> I didn't press anything. I didn't do anything to her feet. I didn't massage. I gave her normal massages. I had to give her, um, you know, just normal relaxing massages. But I didn't do any pressing or molding or whatever. And her feet turned out fine. She walks perfectly normal now. Although one of the doctors said it looks like she's going to have flat feet. Okay, I don't even know if she has flat feet now. I don't think she does. You know they call flat feet now. Some people that this that curve under their feet. Some people don't have it as much as others. Okay. But I don't think so. I'll look at her leg again, but I don't think she has flat feet, okay? So yeah, that's it guys. That's the story of how, you know, I had Cora and I thought that she was going to need assistance working. I don't know what I'm going to call this video, but yeah. I thought she was going to need assistance in walking, but glory to God, she didn't need any assistance. She's fine, she's intelligent, she's beautiful. Yeah, so, so yeah, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Um, I'm going to be coming out with more story time videos. I know you guys actually like story time videos, so I'll tell you guys the story of how I had Eva. Okay, Eva is another another special story on its own. Okay, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.